these were my people and it was going to be great if I could just ignore that niggling feeling in my guts that something really terrible was going to happen. Hello sweet people and welcome back to another video. So this story time has been a long time in the making because as many of you I'm sure remember I did a video a while back about raw food diets and why I don't eat a raw food diet and why I don't suggest that anyone really bother eating a 100% raw food diet for any long term period of time. And in that video, I mentioned that I had had some horrible experiences with raw foodists. Definitely one of the most requested topics that I think I've ever had is to tell my raw food cult bad experiences. So this is it. You know I love to give like disclaimers about stuff, right? So my disclaimer here is that I was 19 years old, or maybe 20. I was super duper freaking naive. So I went into this situation with just ridiculously high expectations that could have never been fulfilled. But I will say this, I never suspected it could have been as screwed up as it was. When I was on 30 bananas a day, I started coming across these different posts about, um, you know, like communities and raw food communities that were sprouting up. And I saw this one post for this place in Hawaii on the Big Island. They were raving about how abundant the food was and how there was so much fruit, they could never eat it by themselves. I got in contact with them and I set up my visit. And everybody in my family was kind of nervous. Like my mom thought that I was going to be dragged into, into the woods and murdered, which was probably a pretty reasonable belief. I was in like my super minimalist, don't spend any money phase of my life so like I didn't want to buy a cell phone and I was like I'm gonna be living in the the tropical jungle of Hawaii who needs a phone I don't need a phone I don't want to be bothered by technology and have my aura interrupted by the cellular waves hi my name is Lily and I'm an insufferable hippie that was me so I got to the Hilo airport and this dude said that he was gonna pick me up he showed up an hour and a half late. Eventually the guy pulls up in his truck and he had a girl with him and it was his girlfriend. And I swear to God, I saw her and she was like this gorgeous mermaid of a human being. And I was like, thank God, thank God he has a girlfriend. So I get in the car, everybody seems super nice and we drive away, right? And he's like, oh, you know, since we're in town, we just have to like stop and run some errands and everything. And I was like, cool, whatever. So we stop, he turns off the car, but leaves the radio on. And he goes and does something, runs some errands, he comes back, tries to start the car, the car won't start. A, a nice stranger gave us a jump. So we get the car started and we go somewhere else and, and he stops and he parks the car again and he turns off the engine and leaves the radio on. And I turned to him and his girlfriend and I was like, oh hey, well since the battery just died, we probably shouldn't leave the radio on because it'll drain the battery again. And they looked at me like, I had just solved the equation that would allow human beings to travel faster than the speed of light. Uh, it was clearly a thought that had never entered their minds before. So anyway, once all the errands were done and everything, we started driving back to the farm, which was on the Hamakua coast. And on the way, we stopped and like we swam in a really beautiful waterfall and we picked fruit and we got coconuts and it was just like this really magical six hours of my life and I felt so happy and so excited after this had happened because I was just confident that I had found the right place and that these were my people and it was going to be great if I could just ignore that niggling feeling in my guts that something really terrible was going to happen. Just push that down. Intuition, who needs it? So we get to the farm and it was dark by the time we got there because we'd taken so long to, to make the drive. And we unloaded everything. I couldn't really see because obviously it was dark. And then he told me that I would just have to sleep in his cabin since, um, since there was no time to, you know, pin pitch my tent or anything like that. <laughs> So the next morning we wake up and it's a gorgeous day 
and I go outside and I bump into other people who were living on the farm and this is when stuff started to get kind of weird again. He seemed pretty cool, but he obviously had a lot of animosity towards our primary host. In fact, he started talking shit about him almost immediately. And he was the one who had made the post on 30 Bananas a Day about how wonderful this place was and how everyone should come. And I was like, oh yeah, I read your post and inspired me to come. And immediately he was like, oh yeah, I keep meaning to take that down. Oh shit. So this guy, in addition to just like bitching about, you know, the farm host, he starts telling me how he just got out of the hospital because he had gotten violently ill with leptospirosis and almost died. And leptospirosis is like a pathogen that you acquire by consuming unwashed raw fruits or vegetables that a rat peed on. And that just kind of gave me my first taste of what the hygiene was like at this place. Then I ran into the host again and, you know, he cracked me open a coconut, which was so appreciated, and we were chatting, and then he just started outright bitching about his girlfriend, his new girlfriend, <laughs> because she was vegan, she had agreed to go, you know, to go vegan with, for him, but she still ate cooked food. And this was apparently a huge problem for him, and he just couldn't understand why someone would do this, and why someone would eat poison and refuse to, to make a change like this. And I was really picking up on the vibe. He wanted me to be like, yeah, screw that bitch, come be with me. I don't wanna do that. That's my I can't stand up for my boundaries voices. It's like, Back in the day, I was lucky if I could get that much out. Usually I just like stayed silent and tried to wait until everything was over. Oh God, to be young again, I wouldn't, oh, I wouldn't redo that for the world. So then it came to about breakfast time and gosh, you know, I, I came from a website that was called 30 bananas a day. I was literally eating like 30 bananas a day, right? So then I go to get breakfast and I'm like, you know, gathering up the fruit and he's like, hey, you gotta save some for everybody. And I was like, oh yeah, of course, but I thought that there was like so much food here that our cup runneth over, like what's going on? <laughs> no, as it turns out, there wasn't nearly enough food for everyone who was staying on this farm. And that's something that I feel like um, should have been disclosed. Like, hey, yeah, come do work trade, can't feed you, but whatever. And it was around this time that I started to figure out that nobody had any money. Nobody had any money and there wasn't enough food. And what I realized was that everyone was on food stamps who lived at this property. And that morning they told me that they would take me to the office where I could apply for food stamps as well. And then we could use all of that food stamp money to buy food for us. You know, I said, I can't get food stamps because I have too much money in my bank account. And as soon as they heard that, it's like little cash registers went off in their eyeballs and they immediately wanted to know like exactly how much money I had. <laughs> and I started getting even more uncomfortable. So after all of that in the morning, I finally asked, I was like, can I just pitch my tent please? I didn't even have a tent, I had a bivy bag, which is like a small cloth coffin that you crawl into at night and sleep in. And it theoretically keeps the elements off of you. They're like, well you can't do it on the ground because you're gonna be sleeping in a cow pasture and the cows could step on you in the night. <laughs> so I pitched my tent, sleeping on a wooden platform. The next morning I get up ready to do like work trade and farming because I'd come to Hawaii because I wanted, I wanted to farm. I wanted to do the organic thing and be with the land. Learn how to be a plant whisperer like this host was because he's just like, he's known all over the island for being so, to, for having such an amazing green thumb, right? So I went looking for work. It was probably 6.30 in the morning. Nobody to be found. I wandered around, 9 a.m., someone finally shows up. And I was like, hey, what's up? You know, like, what are we doing today? And they're like, oh, I don't know, I'm having breakfast. So we sit around, have breakfast. So is there farming that we're supposed to be doing? And the guys, you know, who had lived there for like nine months, they were like, yeah, we should probably go out and Maybe like we could plant some watermelons or something. Okay, 
I understand why there's no food now, but yeah, let's do that. So we go out and start working in the field. By this time, it's probably like 11 o'clock, so it's midday sun, absolutely freaking sweltering. And you know, we do all this stuff, it takes a couple of hours, and I was like, cool, what are we doing now? And they're like, oh no, that's, that's like probably it. Where's the host guy? Maybe he has a list and we can, you know, start working and knock this out. Nowhere to be found. Like, okay, um, I guess we'll just eat, eat lunch, which is half the size that I feel like I need to be able to survive, but whatever. I get up the next day, try to do the same thing. Like, hey, what work trade needs to be done? The host guy doesn't show up until maybe noon, and then he's just like rip-roaring pissed that no one is doing anything. And I'm sitting there like, I don't, I don't know what needs to be done. Like, please give me instruction. Maybe we can get like a list going. He had the communication skills of maybe like an eight-year-old, chimpanzee he just operated somewhere it was he was either like really really happy or completely passive aggressive pissed so at this point i was starting to get pretty disheartened and i went down to like the community this this large structure where supposedly there was wi-fi and i tried to hook up and at that point i bumped into a, a hawaiian guy and i was like oh hey what's up like do you live here too and he was like this is my family's property, of course I live here. And I was like, it's your property? I thought the, the guy, the, the host guy was, you know, this was, is his property. And he was like, no, we let him live here so that he'll plant banana trees and make it look good for the tourists. And I mean, that also explained why there were cows everywhere because they raised cows for meat. And then they had uh, horse trekking available as well. <laughs> Like, this is about the least vegan place I've ever been. They're big pig hunters too. I was like, this, uh, this feels kind of weird. And so I was chatting with this Hawaiian guy, the one of the owners of the property, and he's like, a host guy is not supposed to have people here. He keeps bringing people here and it's not cool. And we're thinking about asking this guy to leave because of it. He's, he just won't listen. We keep telling him not to let people come and stay here. You know, it's like people who eat raw food, it's like they have screws loose in their head. I don't know what's wrong with him, but he doesn't know how to think right. And then he said to me, you seem like a smart girl. What the hell are you doing here? And it was about at that moment that I asked myself the exact same question. <laughs> and then the guy told me like, you should, you should get out of here while you still can. This was like, what, four days since I had landed on the island and I needed to take a shower. I assumed that there would be like basic things like showers. So I've sheepishly asked the host, you know, hey, I need to take a shower. Is there somewhere where I can? do that where I, where I can shower. You know, huge size, you like throw something. <sighs> People always wanted things. Yeah, you know, it's been four days. I have a vagina, I have to like, you just have to clean those every now and then. <laughs> do I, I have to explain this? I have to explain this to a 35 year old man. So he shows me the shower, which was a shower head attached to a hose hanging from the outside of his home. And he told me the hot water heater was broken and I was like, that's fine, I don't, I don't need hot water, I'll just shower here. And I was like, is there like a curtain or something? He's like, no. Okay, I guess I'll just like shower in my bathing suit. I go and I'm, you know, I didn't have any shampoo or any soap or anything and I'm just like trying to scrub myself and you know, like wash the pits and just whatever. And he stands there and watches me the whole time. And I just wanted to cry. I just wanted to freaking cry at this point. While we're on the subject of bathroom hygiene, when I got there, you know, I was like, oh, hey, I gotta pee, like, where's the bathroom? Like, oh, you can just, like, pop a squat anywhere, that's fine. And I was like, oh, cool, yeah, I don't mind peeing outside, that's one with nature, return the, return the nitrogen to the soil. Whatever, it's great, I love to pee outside, sometimes, I pee outside when Levi's in the shower and I can't pee and I feel like I'm gonna die. But, you know, eventually, as a raw foodist, the time came where I had to do other stuff in addition to peeing. And that was when I realized that, um, 
that I had to, to poop outside too. And it's something that I'd never done before. I definitely wasn't opposed to the idea. But what I realized pretty quickly was that no one had designated a place where these six or seven human beings that were sharing a property defecated. And we're like right next to streams. And obviously there are food crops growing everywhere. And I realized that it was just kind of a thing where everybody was pooping wherever they wanted and pretending that they weren't. That's like the first thing that humans learned when civilization started. You know, don't shit where you eat. And I, I was worried, especially considering even with the recent near fatal case of leptospirosis, they weren't washing their food very well. And then as it turns out, everyone's just like pooping everywhere. I mean, there were times where I was like, I have to poop and I have to find a place where I can poop. But it's like, if it looks like an appropriate place to poop, how do I know that someone else didn't poop there five minutes ago and like, I'm gonna step in it or something? You know, th these are these are like genuine concerns that need to be coordinated in communities, okay? So I could almost tolerate that because I still believed that like raw foodists were impervious to getting sick <laughs> or like parasitic infections. Not true. My name is Lily and I am an insufferable hippie. So it was around day three or four that someone had bought watermelon with their food stamps. And they had shared it with everyone in the community. And I was like, wow, that's really generous. Thank you. Like, I appreciate you sharing this with me. I was eating the watermelon and it was Hawaii grown seeded watermelon, whatever. I'm eating it and I'm spitting out the seeds. And literally two members of the community like walk up towering over me. One, one's the host guy and one's the guy who almost died of leptospirosis. And I'm like, what's up? Why aren't you swallowing the seeds? I don't really like them and they, you know, Give me a stomach ache? You should swallow them. Okay, um. So when you poop them out, a watermelon plant will grow and it'll be food for the community. You want me to poop out watermelon seeds and then eat the watermelon that grows out of it? Yeah. I started getting pretty concerned for my health at that point. <laughs> I was also told around that period of time that this was how all of the papaya trees had been seeded. It had started when the host had gone to Thailand and then he swallowed a bunch of papaya seeds before he got on the plane. And then when he got home, he propagated papaya trees all over the property. There's a moment when you realized you've been eating someone else's shit papayas for the last four days and you don't even really like that person. And in that moment, you wish you didn't exist anymore. And I say all of this, I tell all of these stories, and literally my only hesitation in doing so is that this guy still has the best papaya trees on the island and I want them. <laughs> and so after all of this had happened, I just couldn't handle anymore. So I packed up my bivy bag and all my stuff. The next morning I went to the host's girlfriend who was really nice, she was so sweet. I really liked her and I said, um, can I catch a ride with you into town? And she was like, oh my God, you're going? You know, what, what the hell? I was like, yeah, this just, you know, I just isn't a good fit. And she's like, oh, did you tell the host? And I was like, no, I haven't told him. And she's like, you have to tell him. I was like, oh God, do I? Do I really have to tell the guy who watched me take a shower yesterday? Do I really have to tell him? I went and told him, I was like, so I'm gonna take off. He was like, what? Why are you gonna take off? And I was like, oh, it's just, you know, it's just not a good fit. He was like, okay, whatever put my stuff in the car and then I'm sitting in the car waiting to leave. And then he's standing there about five feet away from me. 
He knows I'm there. He said, I don't understand why these asshole people keep coming over here and acting like assholes and coming over here and they just use and they use and they use and they don't give anything back and then they just leave. What's the matter with these assholes? What's the matter with those assholes indeed, host man? So I got out of there. Felt good. I still, I still bump into this guy from time to time. Last time I saw him at the farmer's market, he was like, Oh yeah, you like married some bodybuilder local guy. And it popped out two kids, right? I didn't even care to correct him. Just like, yeah, pretty much. So that is my horrible raw food community experience story time. I don't think I forgot anything, but God knows, I could have blocked it out at this point. But that, um, that soured my experience with raw foodists, but unfortunately my other experience with like 100% raw foodists has been um, pretty similar across the board. A lot of irrational behavior, um, a lot of passive aggressiveness, a lot of dogma, a lot of like you have to believe this or you're the enemy type of stuff and I um, I just I don't want to do that. I can't do it. I'm not gonna do it. And the raw foodist men just have this, um, this really inflated sense of importance and they do I've noticed quite a bit of uh, mansplaining, a lot of arrogance, and that's, that is why I don't like to associate with them too much, or at least be very boundaried in my associations. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you've been entertained if nothing else. You guys know the drill, likes awesome, subscribe if you want to stay up to date, ding the bell if you want notifications. Until next time, make better choices for yourself. Raw foodists are not going to do it for you and take really, really good care. I will see you all very, very soon.